Okay, we are now in challenge number four. So again, I'm taking a look at this from a very structured sequential process. And with each of these slide decks, they're really basic in nature. So I have a cover slide. And now we have the challenge. So challenge number four is again, an addition problem, but looking at it from how do I set up the variables? What do I display to the screen? How do I set up the code that it's going to add those two variables together? And then how do I end the program? So these are the essential thinking elements that each of your learners should be going through in order to write the code. So again, the first thing that we're going to take a look at is writing the pseudocode using begin, display, store, action, display, and end and then writing the flow chart that matches the pseudocode in order to either help them visualize it or help others visualize their code all in the same way. So let's take a look at that. So again, with the pseudocode, we're looking at beginning and ending, and the flow chart has the same structure, begin and end. We want to make sure that there is a beginning element. Where does it start? And where does it end? It has to end somewhere. So these are essential. If the program is constantly running, that's using a lot of computer resources, and we don't want that to happen. But because this is a very beginner level understanding that a program has to start somewhere, it's going to do something. And then once it does something, it's probably going to end. So with this particular example, we're going to use the two numbers, six and seven. We're going to add them together and we're going to display that output. So again, we'll assign, we'll create variables, assign one to the number six and one to the number seven and one to the zero because our sum at the start of all this is going to be zero. So once they have the pseudocode written out, the next part of it is to ensure that when they're playing the game, they should look at their key code and say what icons and make real quick drawings of what that code represents visually. So they wrote it out in language. Now, what does it mean visually? So they should have like an oval shaped at the start and at the bottom. Please ensure that those elements are there, begin and end. Then of course, in this particular example, we have one display element that's a parallelogram at the beginning and at the end that says we'll display what the program is going to do. We're then going to display the output of the math operation. And then everything in between is really creating the variables, storing that data, acting upon the math operation, and then making it work. Okay, well then let's see it work. If we go to our program, we could then see that our print statements are the display statements. Then when we're going to store, I'm going to store six into the variable number one and seven into the variable num two and zero into the variable sum. And then we're going to take that and we're going to take the word sum and change its value. We can do that. That's why it's called a variable. We can change its value. We want to make sure that num1 is an integer, num2 is an integer, and we're going to add this one to this one, 6 plus 7, and that's going to give us the sum printout. So let's take a look at it from a running code, and 6 plus 7 is 13. The code works. The output is correct. Hopefully your students are gaining a lot from this, and I'll see you in challenge number five.